Hey friends, welcome to another episode of On.net. On this one, I have my very good friend Varun to talk to us about Azure Managed Identities. With this, you don't need any secrets. Join us to learn how. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back for another installment of On.net. This is the identity series on On.net. And today I have uh, one of my very good friends, Varun, to talk to us about Manas Identities, a subject very near and dear to my heart because it's uh, it's identity and it's Manas, and I love it. Hey, Varun, how are you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, Chris. How are you? I am good. I'm really excited to have you here because my, everybody needs to know about Manas Identities. If you don't know about them, then you don't know what you're missing. And once you know about them, you can't live without them. That's my that's my motto. That, that's fantastic to hear. I'm so excited to, uh, to be on the show and talk about <laughs> Managed Identities. Uh, uh, tell us a little bit about what you do and uh, what are Manas Identities. Absolutely. So my name is Varun. I'm a program manager in the identity division at Microsoft. Um, I... Uh, my my day job is to make sure that um, all Azure services uh, in uh, all Azure services support this thing called managed entities, which we'll talk about uh, a little bit more. That's good. That's a that's a valiant effort. I want all the services, <laughs> not just of them, some of them, all of them. And I know that we've been adding managed entities to more and more and more services. Ideally, yep. it should be everywhere and permeates everything, so you don't have to worry about stuff that we will see in a second. So take Absolutely. it. Okay, um, so hopefully you guys can sh see my screen. So the, the whole idea behind managed identities is that credentials that you handle every day are like plutonium, right? Yes. Uh, you, don't want to be <laughs> you don't want to be managing SAS keys, certificates, connection strings, these username, password things that you handle uh, day in, day out. Nobody should be doing that. They, they're like plutonium. You should be using gloves and like, protecting, no, nobody should be touching them at all, if possible. Yes. Um, and and we have uh, built technologies where you can securely store them like Key Vault, but mm -hmm. then now you need a way to get to those Key Vaults to, without having to manage a secret or credential. Yes. So that's where, that's how managed identities were born. Um, but now we are taking a step further and saying, okay, what you, you can just use the same concept to access any services that support Azure authentication. So, but, but that's the main premise that when you create a service principle in Azure AD, uh, today you have to manage a credential associated with that. How can we eliminate that where you don't have to do that? Um, and then there is also this 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 whole problem of managing the life cycle of the credential, uh, the service principle itself. Mm -hmm. So if you don't need a service principle to be there in your Azure AD, you, you want it to be gone as soon as the, the reason that you created is is fulfilled. So how do we, how do we automatically clean up uh, service principle was the other uh, the other problem that we we're trying to solve okay. so if you think about it robots in, in in the cloud require authentication right so they need identities so mm -hmm. traditionally you have been saying okay let me create a service principle let me grant it permission let me set a credential on it let me figure out how do i securely store that secret in my, on my side um, i have to rotate that credential on my own and then clean up. Uh, I'm done with this virtual machine. I'm done with this resource that I was using in Azure. Now let me clean up the service principle on, on my own. All of this, there's a better way to do this, which is called managed entities for Azure resources, where it's like you create the resource that you want and say, I want a managed entity for it. You grant that identity the permission that it needs. And, and then after you're done, you delete the resource and uh, the identity is automatically deleted for you. I love uh, it's, it. It's, Much it's basically the simplification of experience that kind of gets achieved with the benefit of you never having to manage credentials anymore. Yes, uh, absolutely. So it, another way to talk about it, I can use managed identities when I'm trying to build an app where my source resource of the communication is, is an Azure resource, like mm -hmm. a VM, an app service, functions, constraints, like Kubernetes, whatever, whatever you can create in Azure that needs to communicate with another service that supports Azure authentication. So it can be your own API, it can be Azure Key Vault storage, anything that supports accepting an Azure AD token, you can uh, use a managed entity with it. Um, and the, 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 the main thing is you don't have to manage any 
secrets or credentials to to use them so for example i am building a website or an app service that needs to use azure that needs to store data in azure storage uh, as the simplest way to, to explain perfect that. where where do uh, i buy this how do i get it <laughs> before we before you get there there are two types of uh, two additional concepts that you need to know um the, there are two types of managed entities system assigned managed entities and user assigned managed entities and i'm going to use a analogy that one of my co-workers created to explain this so imagine that you have a car and you need to get inside your garage uh, mm -hmm. with with the car and uh, so you can use your manual keys and open the garage door manually and then get inside you can press the button on the the built in garage door that you have uh, the, the the mirror that you have in your car where there's a button that you press and then the garage door opens Mm -hmm. or you can have a handheld remote that you use to press a button on the remote and then the garage door opens uh, using the remote so keep that in mind so now your car is like an azure resource um and the garage is essentially the service that you're trying to access um and the 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 means to to, me, to make that communication happen there are things in the middle like keys uh, buttons or, or the remotes so the 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 things in the middle become the identity the fact that you can use them becomes the the means to authenticate and authorize and then the the car having that key is the way you you give that identity to your car right yeah um, so keys are in the in the cloud world keys are like sas saps username password and things like that the 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 remote the the mirror that exists on your uh, in inside your car is like the system assigned managed entity for the resource mm -hmm. it's tied to the life cycle of the resource if you if you so sell the car the the mirror is going to go with it so system assigned managing goes with the resource um, and and the handheld remote is like the user assigned identity where uh, you can you can use it from any car like you are not tied to the uh, the same azure resource you can just assign it to multiple azure resources i love this metaphor this is fantastic <laughs> All right. So now let's quickly see a demo, uh, yes. so so that we can see that in action. So I'm gonna um, jump to my, the Azure portal, and okay. So before before I show you what I'm gonna do, I'm, let me just uh, show what I'm gonna do demo. So I'm gonna create a user assigned identity, and I'm gonna create a, a storage account, and I'm gonna right. create a role assignment where I'm gonna as allow this user assigned managed identity, which itself is an Azure resource. To have yep. access to this storage account, so I'm going to make it a contributor on um, uh, the storage account, and then I'm going to create an Azure function. Um, I have this function created already, so I'm just going to uh, refer that to refer it to it. I'm going to assign this user assign identity to this Azure function, and then write some code that then in basically allows me to access the storage account through that Azure function using that user assign managed identity. Does nice. that okay? Yeah, love okay. it. Let's do this. Let, let's let's do that. So let me jump to uh, uh, the Azure portal. So to create a, a user assigned identity, you go to a use, you can search for managed identities, and you will find managed entities extension. Wait, wait, is that new? No, this is how you create a user assigned managed entity. So you you search for managed entities, and and then you say, okay, I want to create a new managed identity. So uh, I've been doing it through the portal all this time. Sorry, I've been doing it through the CLI. Yeah, you can do you're, it through the CLI. You can do you're it telling me there's out. a portal. I, 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 why did I don't know about it? Anyway, that's, <laughs> that's brilliant. I, I love the UI stuff. Bring it on. OK, so you select a region, uh, a resource group. Remember, a uh, user assigned entity is just like an Azure resource. So it will uh, you, you're creating an Azure resource at this point. So yes. uh, I think we called it AZ Demo US. So let's call that AZ Demo User Assigned. And let's create it. Okay, so uh, a, a little bit of what is happening right now. I'm creating a user assigned identity. Uh, a, a managed identity is a service principle uh, behind the scenes. So what just happened was uh, I created a user assigned identity, but in Azure AD now there is a service principle that got registered with mm -hmm. this client ID and this object ID. So, right. but the the cool thing is i cannot that that service principle is read only i cannot go and change anything about it directly from azure ad uh, if i have to do anything to it i have to go and uh, modify this azure object that you're seeing on the screen so if i delete this then that service principle will automatically get deleted uh, okay. and there is no credential so there is no password or certificate that i have to handle uh, in order to use this identity now so uh, now that i have this identity created i'm going to go to my storage account 
um, and allow that identity to have access uh, to, 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 to the storage account. So that the way I do that is I go under the access control uh, part and then I say, okay, I want to create a new role assignment, but I'm going to select a role of a storage contributor, let's say storage account contributor. And this role allows me to uh, have full access. I think there is also a, a, a role that allows you to just write data so you can select that role as well. But here I'm going to pick user assigned managed entities and I hopefully should be able to see that this is the this is the identity that we just created. Okay. So now I, I just gave that user assigned identity access to the storage account. But but this identity is not still associated with an Azure resource, a source Azure resource. So I'm going to do that next. Um, so I'm going to go create an Azure function, which I think I already have created in my demos. Um, under this uh, Azure function, if I go under the identity tab, I'll see that, okay, so this Azure function already has a system assigned identity, nice. but under the user assigned identity, I can add one or more managed user assigned managed entities to this Azure functions. That's Let, very nice. Uh, so I, I'm just going to add a new one, which is the one that I have created. Mm -hmm. um, and now I've assigned this identity to this Azure function. Yep. Right? Uh, so now let me jump to Visual Studio and show you some code that I'm going to run to uh, use that managed identity with this Azure function. Can you, so, uh, can you zoom in for us, like four yeah. clicks? Yes, yes. Um, yes. So before I do that, to use this user assigned entity, I need to know its client ID. So I'm going to copy this client ID for, for this user assigned entity and then go back to the Azure function. So let's let me zoom in. Is this better? Yes. OK. Um, yeah. So. So all I'm doing is I just I, I just copied my user assigned identities client ID into the code. You can yeah. also do this using config files, but this is just to simplify the whole experience. So once I do that, all I'm uh, uh, we already have support for Azure dot identity library, which I have included in this in this functions file where I I'm using Azure dot identity, and with Azure dot identity there is a there is a concept of default Azure credential. Um, yes. And and a default Azure credential gives you the flexibility to run code locally as well as to deploy it to Azure without having to make any changes to the authentication and authorization configuration. So if I run this code locally, the code will use my uh, signed in user account, which is admin at this tenant to execute and run this code. But if I deploy this the same code without making any changes to Azure, it's going to automatically switch over to use a managed identity because I because that's how default Azure credential works. Okay. And so, that will go sequentially to find the, the first account that's available, right? Yes. 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 It, it, it has a discovery mechanism to figure out which is the first account I can use. And mm -hmm. it, it discovers, it, it, hey, I can use managed entities and it automatically uses that. Um, so in order to use my user assigned managed identity, I uh, you, you do it in a certain way. So you specify the credential option with the managed identity client ID, which yes. I just copied and, and say that, okay, whenever possible, use this client ID. Nice. Okay. And and yeah. and, and all the, the, the code is pretty simple. All it is doing is essentially it is creating a, a, a blob client container um, and trying to write some data in it. So it will try to write uh, the, a name that I'm going to pass in through the to, to the function. Very nice. Um, so I have a couple of questions. Will yep, this code right. run locally on my machine? If I want uh, to test it? it? Yes, it will run on, locally on your machine, but you need to have the, the same permission that the managed entity has uh, been granted to right now. Perfect. And the second one is, do I need to do any code changes when I move to production, or is this ready to go and run live? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just going to actually deploy this uh, to my Azure function. So right, click deploy. Because that's how we, no, I'm just kidding. You can um, use right click deploy for demos. Please use CI CD when you do proper work. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's my um, for demos. I'm yeah. just going to, oh. So uh, I'm just going to say, I just selected in my demos, which was my function, and just say deploy. OK. Right? Mm -hmm. And it's not trying to deploy. Perfect. Um, OK. And the way you can test it is this, uh, I mean, I was testing it before a little bit, but the function is called set my data. Yep. It, it takes a name mm -hmm. and uh, an account 
that you want to create this uh, 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 that you want to create where where you want to write data, which is the storage account. Okay. And the container name and the blob name. I see. And if if this doesn't exist, then it's going to create that and write whatever name you put in the name parameter inside. So okay. everything is con encoded in the URL just so that it, it's the simplest thing that you can build. Easy uh, for, for demo. I like it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, I ran this before and I got an access denied because I had not done the setup to uh, uh, authorize the managed entity to have access to the storage. But now I uh -huh. have. Okay, now that the function is deployed, let me make a, a, an API call to that function where uh, we will try to create a blob uh, where with a different uh, with a name called um, uh, managed identities two uh -huh. uh, with for this storage account um, for a diff for a container called test container okay and a blob called test blob that's the best okay. name Okay, and there you go. So now this this using that user assigned managed identity, I was able to create uh, the blob store to write data to that storage account. So you can quickly go to the storage account and see under blob, if I refresh, you'll be able to find the test container with the test blob with the, with the name that we just recorded. Love it. No secrets, no keys, straight access to my storage. As long as I have the permission set correctly, then that's all we need. And it yep. runs on functions, it runs on any uh, anywhere you run your apps, VMs, yep. containers, anything that you want. Absolutely. So just to recap, uh, uh, TLDR, managed identities are for Azure resources, no, so that they're built so that you don't have to manage any credentials anymore. Um, they give the source resource and identity so that you can access any target that supports Azure authentication. Um, and stop stop managing credentials by yourself. Yes, please. And by the way, I know that we haven't covered this one, but if you want to get managed identities outside of Azure, if your resources are running on on-prem or AWS or Google Cloud, Azure Arc those uh, babies, and then you get managed identities for free. So there that's you right. Managed identities everywhere. I love it. Okay. Done. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for coming.